All right, we're going to talk about summation notation. Now, this is just the first part of 4.2, but uh, 4.2 is in has two weird things. I don't know, put together. They're they're definitely related in everything, but uh, I would maybe put summation notation with antiderivatives and then put the area by itself. Anyway, we're going to talk about summation notation to start with its own little thing. I'm going to break it off into its own little section, and then uh, the area will be its own thing. So, uh, summation notation starts with this letter. It's a Greek letter called sigma. Uh, it has nothing to do with E. I know that's difficult, but that's the way it is. It's sigma because it starts with S, and sum starts with S in its summation notation. So this sigma means we're going to add a bunch of stuff together. We're going to add a certain number of things together. We're going to add from the first thing to the nth thing, from the first thing to the third, from the first to the fifth, and first to the seventh, always starting uh, at one, sometimes zero, and going to n, whatever n happens to be. And how do we know what the first thing is, what the second thing is, what the third thing is? There's some rule that defines a sub i, the ith term. Kind of a weird thing to say, but that's what we're going to say. Um, the ith term is decided by this rule, whatever this rule looks like. And so what we do is we add the first term to the second term to the third term. Uh, this is just in general. We don't have a rule yet, but once we had a rule, we would write the, we would plug in i, and there's going to be something like formula. We plug i equals 1 into that, and that's the first term. i equals 2 into the second one, that's the second term. And we just keep going, plugging in i and getting the successive terms. Uh, so plus uh, a sub n, that goes out to the nth term. This is important. Let's go back. Let's, let's go backwards. What comes before the nth term? a sub n. Once I get my pen, I will tell you. Um, well, before that, if 2 comes before 3 and 1 comes before 2, we're just going backwards. We're subtracting 1 from this, what's called the index this little number down here, then the guy before a sub n would be 1 less than, 1 less than n, so a sub n minus 1. So we add up all the terms up to the nth term. Let's uh, do a quick example of this. If I want to start from i equals 1 to, let's say, 5, of 2 times i. So whatever i is, I'm going to multiply it by 2, and that's going to be that term. So the first term will, I, will be when I take 1 and put it in for i. So 2 times 1 is my first term. Plus 2 times my second term will be 2 for i. Plus now i is going to be 3. So we do the same thing. 2 times 3 plus 2 times i is 4. Last one now, 2 times 5. We have done all of them. Okay, it does not like tablet for some reason. Okay. So we go all the way out to 2 times 5, and then we add them all up. Let's just notice one thing. It's going to be the basis of the first rule. Okay. All of these have a factor of 2. So you get a factor out of 2 from all of them. Factor out of 2 from here, you get 1, and you get 2, you get 3. You're just adding up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so you can see that if there is just some constant multiple times your rule, you get to pull that constant multiple out of the sum. You're, this is the sum. This is not a sum. This is uh, two times this sum. So we can rewrite this as, well, this part is just the sum from i equals 1 to 5 of just i. Right? Not two times i, just i. i is 1, i is 2, i is 3, i is 4, i is 5. Okay. And we multiply that whole thing by 2. So if you have a constant multiple, you get to just pull that out of there. So uh, I'll just grab a, a blue. We'll establish this rule of take a sum uh, from i equals 1 to n with some rule uh, times a, a constant. So say it's a, a constant uh, c times your rule, you know, this whatever it gives you your ith term. You just take your constant and multiply it by the sum from 1 to n of just that simplified rule with it constant factored out. 
Okay, because if you if you did it this way, you'll see we get a two factor in every single one of these terms, and so um, we can factor it out at this point, or we could just factor it out from the beginning. Okay, in any case, uh, one plus two plus three plus four plus five is 15 times 2, that will give us 30. All right, so that's the, the result of that. Um, so next, let's uh, just keep on going with these examples. Uh, if we were to use this guy here, i equals 1 to n of, let's say, 2i again, plus 3, okay? Let's uh, let's see what happens then. Um, well, our first term, oh, n, sorry, n is going to be, let's say, 6 this time. So our first term will be 2 times 1 plus 3, right, plus 3, that didn't change anything. Okay, plus 2 times 2 plus 3, plus 2 times 3 plus 3, plus 2 times 4, plus 3, plus 2 times, and now it's going to freak out again, 2 times 5, plus 3, plus 2 times 6, plus 3. All right. So what I want us to notice is, well, we have the same sum as we had before, 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2 times plus 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4, and so on. Of course, we're going to 6 this time. But we have 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 5, uh, and 6, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. I almost had it. Okay. Let me just erase that little tail that I picked up. Alright. So here we have one sum. The sum, uh, if we factor out that 2, 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to 6 of just i. Right? That applies that first rule we just established. Um, we're just going to add up 1, 1, 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, and we could multiply that, that result by 2, okay, plus another sum. We can rewrite this with its own sum, uh, its own little sum of well, the sum from i equals 1. We're going to start at the first term and go to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth term of just 3, just a bunch of 3's. You'll notice that i has no part of this rule. I, whatever i is doesn't change what the term is. The term is always 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay. So here we have uh, this this simple sum here, 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, we know that's 15, plus 6 is going to be 21, plus uh, just 6 3's added together, so 6 times 3, just n, whatever n is, times the number of that constant you're going to, well, times just the constant. You're going to add up 6 of these, and that's the same as 6 times 3. Um, so this is 42 plus 18, which is 60. Yeah, no, yes, it is 60. Um, so that shows us a couple of things. Um, so we've established a couple of rules here. First, I always like to do these in blue. Let me make sure. If we have a sum or a difference, like if we have this one rule, and then we're adding on something with a, another rule. So the first rule was 2i. The second rule was just always 3. And then we can split it apart into the first rule and the second rule. So, so it's a sum or a difference. You can imagine if we were subtracting 3, it would just be 
the same thing. We subtract this sum. So this will be equal to sum from i equals 1 to n of a sub i plus or minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of b sub i, whatever that other rule is. Okay. Also, we've established this thing about constants. I'm just going to add up a bunch of constants. Well, that's just multiplication. From i equals 1 to n of a constant, a constant c. Then we just take n times c, because we're going to add up n c's. And adding up n c's is the same as n times c. All right, so those are a couple of rules. Now, this guy right here has its own special little formula. And by that I mean from i equals 1 to whatever of just i. You can see I, I would wind up with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. In the previous example, we uh, for that part, for just this part, we wound up with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Um, so uh, that has its own special little rule. I'm going to prove that one with a, a picture proof. And then I'll just tell you some other formulas that there are. OK, so this would just be adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, all the way up to n, whatever n is. So to show you like a one specific example, I'll say i equals 1 to, let's go to 9. I don't want to make it too big of i. So this is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9. But instead of writing that down, I'm going to draw it out. And I'm going to um, do that as precisely as I possibly can. So this is 1, and here is 2. And you can see how I want to add the first two together, right? 1 plus 2, that's going to be 3. And then I keep on going. OK, so I paused the recording while I drew all those out. Uh, you're welcome. And so what I'm going to do, well, first we can see this is represents in a picture what this is. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 5 dots, 6 dots, 7, 8, and 9. So I want to add up all these dots. Um, it's really uh, advantageous to us to figure out a faster way to do this than just adding them together. Because if, if this were 9, or not 9, but 100, that would be really a bummer to add all those up by hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and just copy paste, duplicate it, that wasn't good. Let's try that again. Duplicate. I'm going to move this over here. Let's just change the color. That would be helpful. These are blue. I'm going to take it, flip it over. Um, I can flip it better than that. I know I can. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and put it straight down on top. So you can see that there are just as many columns here as there are here. And I'm going to just ex just put every one of these columns on top of every one of these columns. So it's just coming straight down just like that. That's pretty good. Okay. So what I'm showing here is that um, if I were to count up all of the red and the blue dots together, that would be so much easier. All right. Um, this now makes a rectangle. And if we notice how many dots are there from you know, all the way across here, well, if we drew them, we know there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them. Now, there's 9 also of the red and also one more of the blue. And so there's 10 here. There's one more, right? I put that right on top, and so I added one more. Uh, to here, and two more to here, which this is 8 and this is 2, so that would give you 10 as well. And this is 7 and this is 3, so that would give you 10. So all of these are 10. Um, and to count all of these together, it's really easy. You just do 10 times 9. But now we've counted the red and the blue dots. Well, the red dots and the blue dots, well, the blue dots are just to copy the red dots. And so if we counted the red and the blue, we've basically counted the red twice. We only need to count the red once, so we'll just divide that by 2. And we could go like that, 5 times 9, 45. Okay. You can imagine any time for any number, 9 or, or anything, 
I could always do this. I could always draw this graph out or this picture out. I could go all the way out to a thousand and, and my thousandth column would be a thousand dots high. I could copy and paste and flip it over and the base would be a thousand and the side would be a thousand and one and I could multiply those together and divide by two. Okay, so in general, this guy right here, just take n, right? This, this would be n and you multiply it by n plus one this, the height of this rectangle will be n plus 1. Now you have twice as many as you need, so you divide by 2. And there you go. Um, and doing that calculation is quite simple. One of these is guaranteed to be divisible by 2, so even just looking at that, one of these is going to cancel with 2, and then it's a simple multiplication problem. Uh, a lot easier than adding up all of these red dots, which that was, again, a bummer. Um, legend has it that uh, Gauss was asked, Gauss being a famous mathematician, um, he was asked, let me spell, see if I can spell his name. Apparently, legend has it, his, his teacher asked him uh, because, you know, he was so intelligent and bothering her and he was done with his homework or what have you. Uh, so he said, add up the numbers from 1 to 100. And so he did essentially this. He, he came back just a couple of minutes later <clears throat> and said, I've got it. Um, of course, this task was supposed to take him like the rest of the day, but it just took him a couple minutes. He said, if I add up 1, 2, 3... 9900 oh, it's doing its thing again 99 plus 1 100 uh, well I could I could take this repeat it and put it down here 100 99 98 2 1 right and and add this up I'll add these, and that gives me 101, and add these, that'll give me 101, add these, it'll give me a 101. Every one of these columns will give you 101. Oh, goodness. Let me try and fix that for you. Okay. And, of course, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 99, 100 of those 101s. So, in... Um, in a similar fashion, not in picture, but in number. Uh, we have 100 of those 101s. Of course, we've counted twice as many as we need. We divide by two. So that's kind of the legend of the story of Gauss. Um, so we have that special formula. Let's just write that down again. N of I equals N times N plus 1 over 2. There's 1 if your rule is not just I, but... I squared. So this would be uh, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared all the way up to whatever n is. So it would be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 49 on and on and on up until whatever n is. Um, this is given by n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. I'm just going to double check that and make sure that I'm right. Yeah, I remember that one right. And we have one more. I equals 1 of i cubed. So this is 1 plus 8 plus 27 plus 64 uh, plus 125. And I'm out. That's, that's all I know, up to 5 cubed. So this is n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. All right, so I won't begin to try and prove these to you. Their proof is not too difficult by induction. Uh, there's not really a nice um, picture proof like I showed you for this one. So I'll just leave it uh, for you if you want to try and prove it or find a proof of it. It'd be a cool extra credit problem there. Um, but those are the basics. Those are your formulas. You're going to try and rewrite sums using these formulas. Uh, and um, yeah, that's the basic idea. And we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.